Praise the Lord. I'm glad we were able to. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we were just talking about my shirt, and I was just getting ready to say, I'm glad I'm able to still fit it. It's tight, though. <laughs> I remember my brother Sean Savis, who's a Christian comedian, saying a joke about his shirts, that the cleaners were shrinking his shirts. <laughs> <laughs> knowing that he was just kind of getting bigger, you know, and, and he was blaming it on the cleaners. I can't even do that, Brother Parker. Well, good to have you again tonight uh, for this Wisdom Wednesday session on still on the area of finance, but th tonight we're going to talk a little bit more about savings and investing principles, uh, a, a topic that we've covered before, but we're going to cover and uh, make sure that we uh, re rinse and repeat Amen, somebody. So everybody understands, get a clean slate, a clean understanding. If this is the first time you've joined us, uh, I want to introduce you to Brother Park after we have a word of prayer, and we'll jump right into it. I believe he has a wonderful presentation to show us tonight, and I'm looking forward to it. I will tell you this before we pray. Get your pen and your paper ready. Get your, your note uh, divide your, if you still like me taking a pen and paper, get your note taking device, whether that's your phone recording or whatever you might want to do, get it ready because we're going to share, he's going to share some information tonight that's going to be a blessing to you and to your family. So we praise God for Brother Parker joining us once again uh, tonight to share this vital information. If you are joining us uh, and you haven't shared this with someone, share it right now in the name of Jesus because we need our, our community needs to hear information like this. Share with your cousin, share it with your, your neighbor, share it with your friends, share it with everybody. Lotty dotty and everybody, as they say, because we do need to hear information like this in order to improve our financial condition and to improve our network. We've got to understand the principles in order to lay the foundation to uh, do what we need to do to grow our network. So, Brother Parker, once again, I'm going to ask that you open us in prayer, and then I will close us in prayer after the session is done. Amen. All right. Let's look to the Lord. All right. Lord God, we just thank you this night. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing us the opportunity again to sow and serve you. You are such a uh, merciful God. We just thank you for this opportunity. We know we praise you. And uh, God, we just pray that um, our hearts... Uh, Continues to be steadfast towards you. Allow our word to penetrate the minds of individuals who are joining us tonight. Lord God, allow them to be steadfast to first and foremost seek you first, God. And we know that through your kingdom and all your tools that you've planted, that great things will be added onto it. So we thank you for Pastor Ruffin for uh, allowing this platform to manifest. And God, we know that you're going to get the honor and the glory. It's in your marvelous name we give you thanks tonight. Amen. 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 On this historic day uh, that we celebrate our first uh, Black governor taking office. Uh, today was that day for Brother Wes Moore. Uh, he is a, a good brother, and yes. I believe he will be a great governor. So we thank God for that. Uh, and we thank God for you, Brother Parker, continuing to share your gifts and talents here at Christ our Redeemer, especially around this topic of uh, finance and in the case tonight, um, savings and investing principles. I am so looking forward to uh, hearing all that you have to share tonight and it, just know that it's going to be a blessing. I'm not going to formally read your bio because we did that last week. If someone wants to know all of your credentials, they can go back and look at them, I will just share with the audience that he and I have known each other. We've, I've been fortunate to know this brother <laughs> over 20 years now. Uh, and it's, it has over a decade. That's the way we should say it. We've been knowing each other over a decade because that has more em emphasis, right? That's right. <laughs> for, for young folk, that's a long time. We've been knowing each other a long time. And it has been a blessing. He has been a blessing to both me and my wife as we shifted back a decade ago or more. Uh, and uh, worked with him as he was building his company, just kind of starting out, I guess, around that time. And uh, he, I guess he was uh, an associate at Prime America. He helped to sell us our uh, term insurance policy, which was a blessing to us because we were able to invest the difference. And uh, I, I don't know how else to say it, but the Lord has been good, brother, as a result of that move that we made. So thank you so very much for all that you've done. So as you can hear, he's been in the insurance business over 20 years. And 
and, and financial, I'll say financial industry as well, because insurance in a way helps to protect financial assets. Uh, and he has really grown in his business since that time. And, and we can both say, look what the Lord has done. He's a senior <laughs> vice president, I believe, for Prime America now, he has his own uh, structure, has over 250 agents under him. And I mean, he, he's been blessed and he has been a blessing. Uh, he hasn't kept it to himself. Amen, somebody. He has shared the wealth of information and knowledge everywhere he, go, he goes. He makes the clarion call to save and invest and make sure you protect your assets. Amen, somebody. Brother Parker, without further ado, I'm going to turn it right over to you. I got my pen and my paper ready. And uh, let's see what the Lord is going to do tonight. We pray the Holy Spirit just be amongst everyone who listens and hears. Uh, so Amen. This, might, this wisdom might seep into their minds, into their hearts and their souls, and that they might move out according to what you might share tonight. Come Amen. on, my brother. Amen. Well, hey, thank God for that, right? Uh, I thank God I'm chairing finance and not, you know, my, uh, you know, inauguration speech as governor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so, so, <laughs> so but uh, hey, we uh, certainly again, thank you, Pastor Ruffin, for your wisdom, you know, your knowledge, you know, your uh, humility in terms of, you know, what you've been able to do. And it, it's always great. You know, my daddy always said, you know, somebody over 10 years, I mean, that that says a lot about, you know, a relationship. You, you know, you, you've been doing some decent things you know, along the way, Amen. you know, so, so I'm definitely grateful for that. Uh, give honor where honor is due. And uh, you know, I just love this platform because it's such a great teaching platform. There's so many, uh, you know, principles and things that, you know, individuals, you know, want to aspire to, to become. And, and I've seen your, I've seen your platform. I've had a chance to you know, plug into your platform outside of finance. And I just know you have a heart to sow and give. And uh, I just pray that uh, God will just continuously press down and, you know, give you a blessing that you won't have room to receive. Thank you, and uh, so I, I, I just so grateful for your heart and what you do. But um, tonight we're, we are going to talk again about finance. You know, uh, that's always kind of a tight topic, you know, because, you know, like, like, like when you go to churches, they say, you know, you mention the word money, people start, you know, clamming up a little bit. It gets <laughs> tight up in there. They, they think they're going to, you know, take an offering, <laughs> you know, come to money, you know, uh, strange things happen. But hey, we're, we're going to talk, you know, more so um, about educational, you know, principles, because I love, I love to speak, you know, from the heart of a teacher, you know, um, because I know if, if, if I'm teaching people are learning a lot of things, you know, I'm not going to use big words to try to move you, but, you know, I just pray that you know, I can be able to, to reach, you know, somebody, if it's one person, then, Hey, that, that means that you know, job has been you know done as far as serving and really changing someone's life, because there's so many things that are happening out here, you know, nowadays that people want to know the right, you know, principles. They want to be educated in terms of how to do the right things. And we know that, you know, of course, the, the best way is to be steadfast, connected to God, you know, really, uh, hey, giving homage, you know, to his kingdom, you know, because, hey, where your heart is, there, there will be your blessing. There will be your treasures right there. So we have to make sure that our heart is in the right place, you know, whenever, you know, we're seeking anything, you know, uh, uh, to really advance God's kingdom. So I'm going to jump right into some basic, you know, principles. You know, I've talked about it last year, and uh, I'm going to kind of give you a little, little, little different flavor this time. But they'll still be along you know, amongst the same uh, topics, uh, Pastor. If you can give me sharing privileges, I'll, I'll, I'll jump right in and uh, you know share a couple of things uh, with the group. So let's see here. All righty, may have to go to the uh, security tab and. Uh, give me, uh, allow me to share. Let's see here. Nothing yet. Let's see, I just but, your host. Maybe that should work. Let's see. All right, here we go. Thank you. All right, that allows me to jump right on in. Okay, so, um, so we, you know, we, we I don't last time, hey, how money works, employing principles to achieve, you know, financial success. And uh, those are some of the basic, you know, uh, I'm gonna talk tonight about basic principles. Uh, a lot of these are biblical based principles. You know, I, I believe that, you know, we first have to, you know, seek God first in everything that we do. Uh, you know, we, we 
we always clarify that. That's, you know, in everything that we do, you know, we have to seek him first. Uh, but then secondly, you know, we have to make sure that we are giving, you know, individual. We have to sow into God's kingdom. You know, we, you know, I've learned so much about, you know, money that a lot of your blessings, a lot of your breakthroughs comes from what you give back to God. And what I learned is you can never outgive God. You know, you can you know, give him a tenth, but he says, hey, you know, pour out your tithes and your offerings. And I will, you know, follow with a blessing that you you may not have room to receive. So he says, test them in these areas. Test them in giving of your tithes and your offerings. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Just a little bit on myself. Um, I've been married to that hot chick right there, man, Wanda. You know, uh, man, 17 years. You know, we're parents of, you know, one daughter named Ashley, you know, who's uh, in grad school, man, excelling. Thank God she got out of college. And, uh, you know, uh, she's on her own, man. Thank God for that. Look at God. Won't he do it? But uh, we've been in business, uh, you know, as Pastor said, over over a decade. We're members of the illustrious First Baptist Church of Glenard under Pastor Jenkins, you know, um, and, and we oversee, you know, a couple hundred licensed associates, you know, in a financial business that, that, we, that we own. And, uh, you know, a couple of things. You can get out of debt. That's one of the things I always love to talk about. You can get out of debt. You know, people sometimes give the biggest misnomer. You're always going to have debt. No, you're not. We're going to cancel out that thinking, right? You can always get out of debt. You can do better. You can build savings, right? You can save. I've seen people say two, three, four years of their life and look up and say, look at what God has done. I got some money that's been out of sight, out of mind. I've never in my life saved two, three thousand dollars. Look what happened. And then you can trust that God wants the best for you and your finances, right? He is the owner, right? We are basically stewards of what he's entrusted to us. And man, I'm going to do my best to entrust that I speak a great word to his people. And you can get on the path to what we call financial independence. So we're going to talk about taking control, not in the literal sense, right? <laughs> we're in a uh, spiritual, but in a uh, insightful, you know, trusting way, we're going to take control. And what do you mean by that? Well, you can't control certain things. You can't control the future of social security. Some people call it social insecurity, right? They're, they're still talking, having these debacles about, are they going to be bankrupt in the next 20 years? What's taking place? You still getting your check, right? Some of us can say, I've made it. I made 62, you know, and they're getting that, you know, uh, so that's a blessing to know that, but you can control saving for retirement, right? You can't control what your employer is going to do or what he or she isn't going to do. But you know, sometimes you've got to go make more money before you can save money. So many people nowadays have to find ways to be resourceful and creative to generate an income. I heard a, a wise man uh, once say, um, you know, that if you have one income, you're probably broke, right? So you got to look at multiple sources of income. Taxes, okay? We talk about ways to reduce taxes. Inflation, you can go maximize your savings, you know, towards inflation. You can rise in costs uh, by saving more money. And then the risk of a single investment, you can't control that, but you can diversify your investment choices. So we've heard one of the greatest uh you know, ideologies of all time. Pay yourself first. My daddy used to always say that. Pay yourself first, son. You know, and I remember as a little boy, a little four-year-old going to the bank with like four stocks, four socks and, you know, like stockings. I was like little Santa, you know, bringing them into the bank and I would hear that little clutter. And man, we used to get those passbook savings accounts. That's right. I'm telling you my age. But man, that was one of the greatest phenomena, right? I ever learned as a child, hearing that clatter, man, that clutter, you know, of, of that that change being counted. So I was learning the principle of what? Pay yourself first. So generally speaking, there are three accounts you're going to need in life, okay? So to have a, a complete savings, you need to have these three things, okay? So you want to write these down, right? What's the first one? You need to have an emergency fund, okay? Um, grandma said, hey, look, there's going to come a day where, man, a car <laughs> The, the, you know, we say car may be called car. Some of you got a car, right? It ain't going to work properly. You know, uh, transmission, something's going out. 
man, instead of going to, you know, your next check or waiting on that, to build up an emergency fund. So what is that? It's three to six months, preferably, of, of your uh, monthly income that you can set aside, out of sight, out of mind, that in the event something happens to you or life happens to you, you have an emergency fund. What about a short-term savings? So many people have goals and dreams and ambitions of right uh, saving for maybe a house. That's a short-term saving. What about uh, going on vacation? You know, that's a short-term savings. Okay, so you have a lot of different things that you want to accomplish. So a short-term saving. So that's another bucket outside of your emergency fund. And then lastly, our long-term savings. That can include your 401k or 403b if you work in the schools. But, um, you know, investing in IRAs and things of that nature, those are your long-term savings investment accounts. So you need to have three different buckets of money that is independent of one another that you can uh, strategically put money into that's going to make a difference. So we're going to talk a little bit about time and consistency because I, I hear you. A lot of people say, well, you know, it, it takes so long, you know, when you invest or or I want things right away, man, we need to kill that spirit of that immediate gratification. You know, we need to kill that spirit right now of, you know, you put away today and you be rich tomorrow. There's no such thing. You know, there's a proverb that says, steady plotting brings about prosperity. So you need to be a steady plotter in everything that you do. You need to steadily plot in relationships. You need to steadily plot in, in your employment. You need to steadily plot as well financially, because this is just looking as, at a great illustration. We call it the tale of five investors. I love that. That's right, the tale of five investors. So I'm going to take you through a path of each person who was generated $10,000 in 2008, right? We're going to be we're gonna go, only go back about 15 years. 2008, can you believe that was 15 years ago? Well, look what happened to, to some of these investors. You know, what really clearly happened to them uh, really uh, identifies, you know, really different schematics of how people save money, emotionally, how people save money. Now, uh, investor one, this first person who had 10 grand, what did they do? Well, they do like a lot of people. Impulsively, they put their money in and their money dropped. So they said, wait a minute, I'm getting my money up out of there. You mean tell me I put in 10 grand, I got 5,800? Oh, it's too scary, right? They took their money out of it, right? Uh, what did the second person do? Second person said, hey, look, I got $10,000. They sold the investment and put the money in a money market account because they said, look, the stock market is too daggone risky. I don't know who told me to do this. I'm not going to do this. Okay, investor three, hold on there, right? Uh, investor three said, look, I'm going to hold on to this investment. But they did not begin at a monthly investment plan. But look what happened. Their money still grew, right? So investor three got some skin in the game. They got some, some bang for their buck as far as their investment. But look at investor four. Investor four said, hey, they, they, they sold the investment. They put it in a money market account. Okay, so they took it out of the growth account. And they put it in a slow account called a money market. And they added $500 a month to it. And look what happened. They had $86,000. But look what happened to the last person. The last person, this is really symbolic to the parable of the talents. Remember in the book of Matthew, talks about, you know, what each person did with the gifts, you know, that, that Jesus had, you know, entrusted to them. You know, each of them were given a talent and, and one buried it. One got some something bountifully. One really got a, a great blessing. Well, look what happened to this last investor. He put $10,000. He kept it where it was. And he added $500 to it. And look at this. He got $283,000, okay, as a result of sowing into his investment. So this was just basically a 15-year a run of putting money away. So the moral to the story is, okay, you have to invest long range in order to, to, to get any fruition, to get a bang for your buck. So let's talk about a, it's a basic principle. Since we were talking about uh, the book of Matthew. This just basically talks about three different independent investors. Look at this. Okay. Three people were given 10 grand and look what happened over a period of time. One person did not, he buried his, his talent, right? 10 grand, he only amounted or amassed 48, $40,000 over a 48 year period. 
Look at this, 6%, he did a little bit better, but look what happens at 12%. You got 2.5 million. So you have to be able to put money away for, for a particular uh, long period of time when it comes to your long-term investment. So you always have to invest with your head, not the headlines. So this is just you know showing you that $10,000 over a period of time in the stock market, starting back from December 1991, look at this, a lot of crises along the way has taken place, right? You know, we had 9-11, we had, you know, uh, you know, tariffs, we had, you know, inflation crisis, you know, we had the Gulf War, we had so many things along the way that had occurred. But this person put 10 grand away in 91, and look at this, they got $200,000 over a 30-year period of time. So if you can see this, this slope that I've, I've uh, you know, this, this axis that I've that I drew, it's showing that your money is going to be like walking upstairs, right? There's going to have some flat, flat uh, levels, but then there's going to be some peaks and spikes along the way. So you got to invest over a period of time as opposed to just staying uh, flat or safe. And uh, again, invest with your head, not the, high, uh, the headlines. This is just showing you an illustration of some of the events that have taken place data breaches, Ebola, remember that back in 2014, you know, looking at Equifax data breach. Look at this. These are just showing you the, the returns in the market, okay, over a period of time. So the market has averaged anywhere between 10 and 12% over a 30, 40 year period of, uh, of time. So this just goes to show that, you know, uh, anytime you put money away, it's in some, you know, um, some, some decent funds. You know, they're, they're going to average out between 10 and 12 percent. And over time, you can achieve your investment goals regardless of what has happened. Now, I love this because this just shows the cycle of emotions. People tend to put money away. They are very optimistic. Oh, I'm going to go for it. I got some money. I got 10 grand. And they put it in and they see it go up and they're like, oh, wow, this is a great thrill. That's one of the most exciting things in life to see is to see managed money growth. I don't know if you had the opportunity to put away some money and look up, you know, three, four months later and you see that thing going, you're like, we're going to make it big. It's coming. And look at this. But here's the height of euphoria, right? That investment has gone up, man. You're like, oh, I'm about to hit it big. But then you look back, you get a statement 30 days later and you say, what happened? <laughs> it's gone down, you know, and steadily you have a crisis that occurs in life and it's steadily going down. And man, then you become somewhat pessimistic. And then here it goes again. It's going back up. You become a little bit more optimistic. That is the life cycle of emotionally of, of how people typically operate with investing. So you have to stay educated. You have to stay enlightened to understand that this is cyclical. OK, this is something that's going to happen over time as you invest money. But look at this. Consider this. I love this. It says throughout the years, the average stock market rate of return has stayed at around 11 percent. That's including natural changes, you know, in performance. So You're going to have things that occur in life, but you have to stay the course, uh, not saying ignore the course, stay the course, but be uh, be diligent, be knowledgeable in terms of what you're staying the course on and you'll ultimately win time and time again. Okay, so let's kind of switch gears a little bit. And let's kind of talk a little bit about building what we call a strong financial house. Okay, so most people, when they sit down or they want to plan as far as getting ahead, they say, you know, 2023 is here. I'm going to do something different, Pastor. I'm, 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 look, I'm, I'm made up in my mind. I'm going to get on, on a plan, on a path to financial independence. So they always say, Derek, where do I start? What exactly should I be doing? So here's some basic emphasis that we're, we're going to cover. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a strong financial house. We're not going to. We're not just. I, I know I showed you the illustration of investing and putting money away, but strategically, uh, I will draw an example of a house and I'll say, Hey, look, here's what we're going to do. The first area we're going to do is is protect your income. Do you have dependents? In other words, do you have people? And even if something happened to you prematurely. Uh, your income going away would affect them. 
Yes, I have children. So if you have children, you have a spouse, we need to first and foremost protect that, okay? Uh, we need to protect that with what we call term life insurance, okay? We need to get that in place because if God makes you an angel or you become an angel, you know, tomorrow, your family still needs to be able to live out their dreams and the goals uh, in, in your absence, okay? Then we're going to work our way up. We're going to get a will. Do you know seven out of 10 families do not have a will? You know, if I had an hour to spend, I would talk about a will and the importance of protecting your estate. You know, so many loved ones, you know, unfortunately pass on and there's not a will in place and people have battles over their loved ones, um, you know, things that they left behind. So, so to resolve that, we have to get a will in place. Okay. So we're going to work our way up. You may say, Hey, I don't have much money. Um, you know, I, I'm not leaving nothing behind. Well, Hey, you're leaving yourself behind. Okay. You have to protect that, you know, give you an example. I had an individual who was in their 40s told me they didn't have anything. You know, they passed away and, and, and there was a, a, a lawsuit, a health-oriented lawsuit against the hospital that paid well over, once they settled it, it paid over a million and a half dollars. Let me ask you the question. If there's no will in place, who gets that money? That's exactly it. Most people say, well, I'm not sure who gets the money. Well, you, you know, the courts are going to say, hey, this is a probatable issue. So that just means we're going to battle it out to figure out who's going to get that. Don't put your family in that position. Pay the pay the nominal cost and go ahead and get a will, okay, outline for you and your family, and you'll, you'll be at peace. Okay, then we're going to work our way up. We're going to uh, work on a game plan to accelerate debt. We need to get completely debt free. One of the big impe biggest impediments for people uh, achieving financial prosperity is debt. Debt, uh, the, you know, God says the borrower is slave to the lender. And debt is just, man, we, want, we need to kill this spirit. We need to kill that demon. It's taking away your retirement. It's, it's jeopardizing your children of their uh, financial savings for the future. We need to kill the debt. Then we're going to work our way up. What's the next thing? Well, retirement. Well, you notice retirement comes before kids' college savings. Why is that? Well, because if you don't start saving for retirement, you know, you may not make it. You know, your kids may decide at 16, 17 years old, they may say, hey, dad, I'm not going to school. Or mom, I, I, I've determined I'm going to the Peace Corps. I'm doing something completely different, which is okay. But we need to basically have that as a last resort. We need to get these other areas under control, and then we can begin to work up towards our other goals and dreams. So as it says here, how would you rate your desire to become debt-free and financially independent? Very, very important when we look at uh, uh, building a plan for building a strong financial house. Most people don't plan to fail. They absolutely fail to plan. So this is a plan, a methodical plan to outline some basic steps of emphasis that we're going to work for. Now, I know the emphasis of our, of our call tonight is talking about savings and investing. Again, I want to touch on debt because debt, man, it just kills a lot of people. It really robs them of exactly what they're striving to accomplish. So if you've got debt, you need to have a strategic plan in place to pay off the debt. So let's just talk a little bit about this because um, this just says, I love this illustration. If you had a $3,000 purchase with no new purchases, and make minimum payments, it would take you 10 years and $2,000 in interest charges just to pay that off. That's amazing. Most people don't understand what a credit card is and how it robs you uh, because it doesn't have a defined payment nor an interest calendar. So let's look at that. So $3,000 purchase, uh, it's, you're gonna pay $5,002, but look, 10 years, that's ridiculous. So there is a difference between what we call revolving debt and fix that. So look at this. Revolving debt. Okay, that was my first illustration. What does that mean? Well, $17,000 credit card balance with 18% interest paying $5.95 a month. It's going to take you 17 years and two months to pay that off. Look at this. Almost three quarters of your payment is going towards the stinking interest. You see there? That kills most people. Interest is the killer. Why? Because there's no fixed payment and there's no fixed 
term. Okay, so you're thinking, okay, well, what does he mean when he says fixed interest, fixed term? Well, think of it. You go invest or you buy a, a vehicle or you buy a house. Okay, both of those entities have what? A fixed payment and they have a fixed term. So in this illustration, if I use a, say, a car payment, okay, same amount of money, $17,000, 18% interest, which is ridiculous. I won't pay 18% interest on a vehicle if I'm paying $5.95 a month. But you see there? Fixed. There's that word. Fixed. Look at this. You see the interest? Look at that difference. It's like night and day. So it's going to take, look, you're going to pay it off three years and two months to pay off versus 17 years. You tell me which one makes a lot more sense. So we have to stay away from these things. We have to get out of this. This is credit card debt. Make a declaration this month that I'm going to outline a game plan to completely pay off all my debt because the borrower is continuously enslaved to the lender. So we need to avoid that and get rid of that because it's killing us. And uh, years ago, the United States government imposed a law in the, in the, in the uh, Taxpayer Relief Act. They imposed a law, and here's what they said. It said on every credit card statement, we're going to highlight exactly how long it takes for you to pay off your debt. So looking at this credit card statement, this person has a $1,200 balance just by paying the minimums. Look at this. It's going to take them seven years and $2,000 in interest. But if they started adding a little bit more money, that's three years. See, every statement has this. But, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, when people get credit card statements, it's, oh, oh my God, I, I, I can't open it right now. You know, well, you don't want to open it because you don't want to see what, what, what is here. It's, it's right there. You know exactly what it is, but we got to kill this. We need, we need to rebuke right now, Chase, um, you know, MasterCard and, you know, uh, American Excess. We need to get rid of those things because they're robbing you of your joy. They're robbing you of the things that you need to have. So, so these are some basic credit, common credit mistakes, not valuing your credit. You need to look at your credit, see what's there, raising credit limits. I uh, thank God I don't live a lifestyle of buying on credit, you know, uh, using credit cards excessively, you know, not monitoring your credit history or your credit score, not knowing, you know, the rates and fees, you know, cash is always king. You know, if you can get into a habit of occupying cash, put it in your pocket, you feel different. Matter of fact, you walk a little different when you got cash in your pocket. But credit, man, you just kind of, you know, you're, you're like a sluggard. You know, you're just kind of like, man, I know something's wrong here. I'm not feeling good about myself having these credit cards. That's right. You shouldn't feel, feel good. So let's um, talk a little bit uh, on, on uh, a basic principle here as far as life insurance. And then I'll venture back um, and finish off with a uh, basic uh, saving example. Uh, why do I mention that? Because uh, it's probably the third or fourth largest purchase you'll make in your financial portfolio, but probably the least research. You know, unfortunately, um, again, we have so many individuals who are just not adequately protected or they don't have protection at all. You know, unfortunately, six months ago, I lost, you know, uh, my best friend. I lost, you know, a very close you know, person in my life, my brother. You know, um, thank God for you know, uh, interacting and speaking and communicating for years. Thank God he had a plan in place. Not a, I can't imagine. I think God, you know, used that. I know that that was a, you know, something that I've, I've gone through, I'm growing through so that I can see exactly the impact it has on other people. I have such compassion for people who don't have these things in place. And you should, and you, this illustration shows a couple here that has $7,000 monthly income coming in. But let me ask you this, are we promised tomorrow? You know, what if the Lord decides to make that, that husband an angel and the wife is left with a child and $3,500 in income? What happens to the rest of these things? You know, do, the, do your creditors give you a vacation? Do they say, hey, call us back in uh, two years. We know you're going through a crisis right now doesn't happen, right? So they have to be paid. 
So in order to, to really render those things or, or to continuously pay those things, we need to have a plan in place. That's where life insurance or income protection comes in place. Because if this happens to your family, they're going to lose everything. You know, um, GoFundMe is not life insurance. This is one of the worst plans. And unfortunately, uh, about six out of 10 of Americans who, who have an untimely demise, this is where they go. It's, it's pretty tragic to know that you uh, have subjected your family to depending on a fund that is not uh, really going to be there. You know, there's so many people who've had go funds that have said uh, that they don't even get the money. The resources are just not there. So you need to spend a little bit of extra money to go get on you. Ideally, I love what uh, Dave Ramsey, Susie Orsman says, you need to get on you between five to 10 times of your income, some life insurance, okay, that you own uh, outside of, of your occupation. But looking here, um, you know, we want to talk about, you know, hey, making sure we have the right kind of insurance because you got insurance in your car, right? You got insurance in your house. You got all these things, but, you know, you need to have insurance on your life, right? It's certainly much more uh, important than, you know, uh, those things mentioned before. So, you know, as life evolves, we know that uh, there's a theory. It's called decreasing responsibility. Right here, right now, you got kids, you got uh, assets, you got some debts, you better have some life insurance. Okay, let me say that again. You have kids, you have young kids, you have assets, you have things, you need to have life insurance like pronto, right away, don't delay. Okay, if you don't have that outside of your job, you need to pick up the phone tomorrow and say, hey, look, you know, I need to get a quote for life insurance. You know, you can call a, a, a reputable, uh, you know, person in your community. You know, at the outset of this, I'll be happy to give you my credentials, uh, but you need to basically have someone that can really uh, speak to you about this and be very candid. Uh, you need to get a plan in place right away because tomorrow is not promised. And unfortunately, there's just too many things happening in these days and times where people don't have, you know, coverage. You got debt, you got mortgage, your loss of income would be completely devastating. So as you evolve in life, okay, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a plan in place. And okay? we're not just going to have the, the insurance, that's part of it, right? But we're going to have a plan in place to save and invest because over here at retirement, there's a less need for insurance, but there's a greater need for you having more money. You with me? You got to have more money over here. That just means you have retirement savings because ultimately the important thing is, hey, your kids are grown. We know they move back nowadays. Thank God ours moved out. You know, she's on her own. Man, the debts are lowered, right? Mortgage is paid because retirement income is needed. Much, much more important, you know, at this stage in your life. So get some of the experts, you know, uh, hey, make sure that you buy term insurance. Stay away from the other stuff, right? Um, you know, uh, Susie Orsman, I strongly believe in terms of best insurance. Dave Ramsey, you know, listen to, again, someone who has the spirit of a teacher, not salesy, but a teacher who can really help you because you never want to buy any type of cash value in, in insurance. It's just much, much too costly. Um, never buy insurance as an, as an investment because it's not. I don't care what kind of insurance you show me. If you show me a savings component, um, you know, you need to run, you know, because someone in there is making some extra premiums where they're, they're, they're really going to, you know, mess you up. So you never buy a life insurance that pays dividends, okay? Um, and uh, so, so very important. And uh, we know uh, some of these individuals from the past, right? Uh, man, I, I used to love this guy of Purple Rain, right? <laughs> um, and uh, man, we remember, you know, Aretha, you know, Aretha. But what did they all have in, you know, Eddie, you know, what did they all have in, in common? Well, none of them had a will in place. So just looking at that, there's no will. Your, your particular county that you reside in has a plan. So this is a plan for uh, Prince George's County uh, in Maryland, the state of Maryland. So it says, uh, it, if there's no will, there's a thing called intestate laws, okay? So that just means distribution of assets, okay, are based on the uh, intestate law. So in Maryland, if, if a spouse and minor uh, and child survive, the spouse receives half and 
the children could have. Oftentimes, couples think, oh, we were married. You know, we were a blended family, but I get everything. Oh, nope, doesn't happen that way. So, so you need to basically have a will in place because uh, as it says here, a will is one of the most important legal documents. It's giving legal declaration of a person's intentions and desires. And we need to keep it right there. That's very, very important um, as far as making sure that you have that will in place. So if you don't do a will, guess what? The state will have one for you. It's called half, right? Uh, the attorneys and everyone else are going to reap some dividends along the way. And we don't want that. So looking here, just bouncing back off of uh, some of the retirement uh, things here, I'll, I'll field some things here just uh, really kind of to kind of wrap up. Uh, will I have enough saved to live off for a comfortable retirement? And will I outlive the money that I've saved up? That's two big common questions that people usually ask me. And uh, looking here, uh, there's a couple of vehicles that you can take advantage of, okay, even if you're employed. So you can work a job and have a 401k uh, or work you know, for a school or a hospital entity and have what is called a 403b. And essentially you can still can put money away into what we call a IRA, okay? IRA stands for Independent Retirement Account. So if you're under the age of uh, 50, you can put away $6,000 a year. This money grows tax deferred. If you keep it for five years, guess what, man? Everything is tax free. I don't know about you. I love to hear the word free. That just means whatever you've saved and accumulated, it's free. But if you're over 50, okay, there's a thing called a catch up provision where you can put seven grand. So over time, um, you know, more money is always, always better. But uh, there's another component called a traditional IRA. That just basically means that some of the money that's there is deductible, okay, uh, without getting into you know, all the you know, kinetics, it's tax deferred still, but uh, it's basically some of the withdrawals, you know, are certainly taxable in, in looking at that. But, um, um, you know, the time value of money is very, very significant. This just, just basically says yeah, a 22 year old started saving, putting five grand away, um, and they stopped contributing five years later. So they started, you know, uh, at age 22, you know, then they stopped saving. Look at this. They still accumulated $1.8 million. Isn't that amazing? Just starting, hey, five grand at 22 every year and then stopping, still having 1.8 million. Look at this, second person, investor B, didn't start until they were 30, right? This has happens to a lot of us. We procrastinate, we put off, uh, you know, we don't, we delay. And look at this, 5,000 still put away, but look at this, $190,000 invested versus uh, the other person who put away 40, so they put away more uh, at a 190, but look at this, look at the amount that was accumulated. So investor B still accumulated $1.7 million after putting 190,000. Why is that? Well, because time, look at this, time factor that we said, time is money. You heard that? It is so important. Time is money. This money's had an opportunity to turn over so many more times. So the earlier, the better. That's the moral to the story of, of doing that. Um, here's uh, basically, um, you know, I always ask individuals, hey, I love to serve. Uh, I, I know this is operating in my, my you know, purpose of, of serving and sowing into individuals. You know, at the outset, I am going to have a uh, section where I have all my credentials listed. So if you feel as though, hey, you know what? I want to connect with Derek. I love some of his thoughts as far as, you know, getting ahead. I'll be happy to reach out to you and connect with you uh, free of charge. Um, basically, um, I'll be able to you know, help you with any of the particular areas that we address and, uh, you know, uh, give you an assessment as far as getting ahead. So it's complimentary. Like I said, it's free of charge. Uh, the companies that basically um, I work with, they pay me as opposed to the clients paying me. Uh, what I do is customize and it's completely confidential. That just means you don't have to worry about somebody um, else knowing your story of, of what you're dealing with. Um, and uh, just a couple of things, uh, putting a money away through mutual funds, which is obviously a very, very safe way of saving money. Uh, because as I alluded to earlier, mutual funds, as you saw the returns over time, they're going to average between 10 and 12 percent. But there's three ways of really uh, making money in mutual funds, dividends, capital gains, 
and appreciation of your funds. Now, when you put money in the bank, how many ways do you make money? One way, right? It's called no interest. <laughs> so, so three to one, I don't know about you. I love the three versus the one makes a lot, lot more sense. But we want to bypass the middle person, which is the banker. Okay. And we want to learn how to globalize our money. Okay. By taking advantage of the American economy. Now, I know you're thinking, okay, yeah, that's just one way of investing your money. Okay. You got to have some, you, you got to have money in different buckets. You got to put it away in different areas in order to allow, you know, uh, your, your money to compound and work for you. Okay. So, so that's, that's certainly one way. Now, looking here, the three legged stool theory. Uh, well, there was a long, long time ago, right? 60 plus years ago, 70 years, people said, hey, look, I'm going to work hard and the government's going to do it for me. I got social security. Then it started to be called social insecurity, right? So uh, then uh, company pensions came along. You know, plenty of individuals, 70 and older, who ever saved a dime in their lives. But guess what? They had a pension, which was phenomenal. You know, imagine working for General Motors for 40 years and, you know, they're paying you $5,000 a month. You know, guess what? There's only about 20% of companies out here who offer pensions now. Okay, so so that's not an ideal solution right now for a lot of people, right? Um, and then, well, what's the third one? Personal savings. That's your 401k, right? So now we know that we have to have all of these components operating in sync in order to build a ideal retirement plan, okay? So you need to have a 401k going, okay? Uh, if there's a pension, right? And then social insecurity. So we're going to lean more though on personal savings uh, starting earlier, okay? You don't have to be great to start, you know? Um, you don't have to be great to you know, finish well, but you do need to start in order to do great things. So that's very, very important. Putting money away uh, earlier, the better uh, to allow your your money to to grow. So don't just save, invest. Rate of recur return is is ultimately the key. I alluded to that a little bit earlier in terms of maximizing your return, getting a great rate of return by ideally putting money away uh, into uh, growth or investment related accounts. Understanding, you know, um, uh, putting money away. We're in a dollar cost average over time. I'm not going to get too much into that. That just basically has to do with that. When the market's down, uh, you're going to basically be making a lot more money because it's fluctuating and you're buying more shares uh, as opposed to a rising market where the price per share is just continuously going up, up, up. Um, and uh, But more importantly, you know, Pastor, um, just kind of wrapping up here, here's a couple of things I know. Uh, number one, you can do this. Let me just say this again. You can do this. I want to speak to, you know, um, any person who's listening, you can do this. You know, you can do it. Um, it just basically, again, steady plotting brings about prosperity. The path to financial independence, it starts with just understanding basic concepts. You know, it's kind of like the person who's kind of stuck, who, who wants to lose weight. You can do this. You know, the best path is to get in the gym, right? So start learning more about yourself. You can do this. So. You know, you got to take the basic steps. You have to start to learn a little bit more. The basic concepts, as I alluded to, you can do it. And then uh, next, winning the financial war, it's a result of winning tiny, tiny battles day to day. I love what Dave Ramsey says. I love it. He just says, if you're sick and tired of your life being uh, in a dismal place, not being where you want it to be, you got to go do something about it. You got to get mad. You got to get infuriated with what's going on and you got to start shaking some things up. So you can do this. You can start winning the war. You can say, hey, look, you know what? I don't like where I'm at. You know, I, I don't like the debt that I, I've accumulated. I don't like the lack of savings. I'm going to go to work and uh, I'm going to win. So if you put together a simple plan to follow it, you'll be amazed at what can happen over time, the progress you can make. I love it when I've helped individuals put a plan in place and work with them over two, three years. They're debt free. They got savings. Uh, they, they got insurance. They're doing all the all the things, not all the right things, but they're doing better than they, where they were before. 
And man, oh man, it's just great. So here's some of my credentials, you know, as far as contacting me. You can reach me uh, directly via email at parkerderek05 at google.com. Uh, I do return those <laughs> and uh, personally return emails, uh, you know, or you can directly call me. You know, people say, wow, you allow people to call you? Yes, I do. Uh, people can directly call me. They can engage. Uh, I'll be happy to engage in a, you know, personal confidential, confidential conversation with you in terms of what it may be uh, that you have uh, that you want to, you know, address. Um, or you can, you can, you can uh, hit me on my web website, you know, dtaenterprise.com, and uh, you can inbox me, and uh, I'll be happy to, you know, communicate and dialogue with you. Um, so, uh, looking forward to, you know, certainly interactions. Uh, this is a such a phenomenal topic. There's so many areas, but just understand this: um, finances is about 70, 80 percent behavior, and 20, 30 percent concepts got to change the behaviors if you want to get ahead you gotta you gotta understand that the way you used to do things didn't get you to where you want it to be you gotta change some of the behaviors so you can go get where you want it and um i'm just uh you know really blessed past rough into being a place to really help enlighten so many people in areas uh, i thank god for bringing my calling you know i just uh you know i i know i, I lost one brother 20 plus years ago and uh, this led to my journey and lo losing this other brother. I just know God's up to something. I'm, I'm seeking and just asking. It's just so many things kind of coming at me. And I'm just steadfast and, and knowing that there's a there's another, you know, insight that's coming, you know, right with this. So but um, I'm truly honored to be on you know on your platform today. And I thank you for the opportunity to serve. Amen. Before I go any further and. I I want to stop and have a word of prayer with you. Um, I, you're my friend, a brother, amen, first of all. And before I know you've shared a lot of great information, but I, I definitely want to uh, have a word of prayer with you. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this brother who continues to serve, continues to lay down his life, literally, to share information for the community. Uh, giving of his time and his talents, God. Now, God, we ask that you would send him a peace that passes all understanding. God, as he continues to go through the season of transition in the, in the life of his brother, in the homegoing of his brother, God, we pray that you would just continue to comfort her, him and his family, continue to, God, help him to continue to endure God, uh, through your spirit. God, in the name of Jesus, cover him even right now in the name of Jesus. Bless him, God, in his going in and his going out, wherever he may go, wherever he, whatever he might have to do, God, cover him. And then reassure him, God, that you never left him, that you'll never leave him nor forsake him, and that it is well, God, with his brother's soul. But more importantly, God, in those quiet moments, speak to him in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. 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 All right, my brother, I definitely appreciate all that you shared tonight. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I didn't see any any questions. If you have questions and I see some of you have joined us, please feel free to ask those questions now in the chat, in, in your Facebook uh, chat section, and, and Brother Parker will do his best to answer. We have about seven minutes late left in the session. Uh, and uh, I wanted to just share some things I heard uh, as far as saving and investing principles, he mentioned three different funds that you should have. The emergency fund, the short-term savings plan, and the long-term savings plan. And, and, I, and he says steady plot. It's steady plot is your savings and, and investments. And he laid out, uh, for the long term, he laid out several different examples of people saving uh, and in the longer term and sticking with the investment plan. That's so important. Uh, and, and, and the cycles of the market, as well as the corresponding cycles of emotions. Amen, somebody. It, it can be challenging, but once you understand the market a little better, and he laid it out for you, uh, especially the equities market. If you do your research, if you take a look online and look at bull markets and then bear markets, you'll see that every time that there's a bear market, which is kind of where we have been in for the last past several months due to uh, several factors, inflation, Ukrainian war, politics, everything. <laughs> but uh, you, you can see that they last a while, but eventually the market comes roaring back. So it's better for you to stick with your plan. Uh, and then he talked about 
um, credit scores, one of the things that really struck me with this uh, is the credit score, a credit in, in and of itself, first of all, being in credit. I think he mentioned 18%. I'll tell you right now that those interest rates are closer to 26 to 29%, almost 30%. Uh, it, that's crazy. That's mm. like a loan shark. Mm. In 25 to 30% is like somebody the big on your money. Loan that's your, that, Amen. your daddy. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so you know how that ends up. But that's what's going on with these banks and other credit card companies. They become your dad. <laughs> they become your... <laughs> They become your owner. And so you're paying all this interest on money that you borrow from them. So try your best to get out of debt. He mentioned lower interest scores. Lower interest scores really impact you in such negative ways. So you want to be aware of what your credit scores are and you want to continually work to improve them, uh, your credit scores, because the higher your score, the better terms you are able to get in loans and things of that nature, necessities. Even when you look at a lower score can impact your uh, basic necessities. It can impact your housing, your ability to have housing and shelter. It can impact all of those things. So you want to be uh, fully aware of what your credit scores are and work to improve them. You want to be saving, saving and investing along the way. He says something very important. You have to pay yourself. If you never pay yourself, and, and allow your money to work for you, you will work all of your life to work for money. Let me say that again. If you don't put your money to work for you, you will work all of your life for money. Now I'll give you one small example and then I'll, you know, then we're gonna try to get out of here. One, I, I watched my big mama <laughs> and my grandmother for most of you, but my big mama work based on the times, being able to have like a menial job, so to speak, working in a mental mental health institution, making fair, low to fair, fair wages. I'll say that as best, as the best potential um, scenario, fair wages, but low wages. And all along the way, she, was, she would pinch and save, pinch and save. She was an active church member, tither, had a duplex home, had families come to live with them. If she can do that based on her times of low income, certainly times haven't changed that much that we should not be able to put pinch something away for ourselves to save and invest. So I would encourage you to do so. Uh, if you're struggling out there and you need a comprehensive plan, I want to encourage you to get in touch with Brother Parker. He has told you he will give you a free assessment. You can't beat that at least explore the possibilities of where you are, start today, whatever your situation is, start today and uh, do what you can do to set some money aside so at least you're covering uh, your terminal expenses. Let me call them that, your burial expenses. Amen, somebody. Um, and then he mentioned the IRA, uh, he mentioned IRAs, he mentioned Roth IRAs. And so I, I want to make sure I point this out. If When you invest in mutual funds, if you're under a certain income level and you're putting money aside in the IRA, you need to put it in a Roth because what that's going to do is keep your gains from being taxed. This is, a, this is one of the very few vehicles and instruments that are geared towards the, the, the lower class, middle class, uh, uh, the common person, amen. Rich folk can manipulate the tax system. It's, it's built and designed for them to manipulate it, but they have plenty of money. The RA allows you, especially the Roth RA, allows you, it's not manipulation, it's written in the code, it allows you to take advantage of the tax code. And so we want to be able to do that. And then he mentioned the three-legged stool, and I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to go as a pastor. I'm going to go with the bar stool theory, amen? Not just the regular stool. The bar stool has four legs, at least four legs, right? And so you have your social security index, you have your pension, you have your personal savings, which is typically a retirement account, your 401k. But then you should have a personal portfolio. You should have, you know, your Roth IRA, a mutual fund, uh, stocks, equities, bonds. And then this, this is a very important sector that we we should we're gonna try to do something else on, but you should have solid several streams of income coming in, yes. solid income. 
Yes. By silent income, I mean royal rentals, royalties, dividends, patents. If you are able to invent something, you can have patents. And so you need these several streams of income. But I want to say to you, Brother Parker, you have done an excellent job provide, uh, sharing the information in the time that we've had. I really do thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Brothers and sisters, you will be able to go back and look at this uh, on our Facebook page. I want you to share it with someone. Share it with someone. Share it with your children. It would be a shame for you to keep all of this good information to yourself and not share it with a friend, share it with a child, uh, anyone, a neighbor, a, a, anyone that you're associated with, you should be sharing this information because communities of color really need to take advantage of information like this, which is this is free information for you to really build your financial house and get your financial house in order. And that's what I'll say uh, towards that. Thank you again, Brother Parker for all that you have done here at uh, Christ Our Redeemer and for sharing this information tonight. Let's have a, another word of prayer to close out and then you can have the rest of your night to yourselves, audience. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for all that you got put in our minds, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment when it comes to uh, our lives, God, but not only our lives, in particular, like our financial house, our financial lives, God, Bless us as a people that we would take advantage of this information that you shared freely with us tonight, God, that we might be able to be a blessing to our children's children, God, that we might be a, a blessing to, that we would leave them better off than when they came into this world, God. We thank you, God, that uh, you bless us, God, that we, that not that we should hoard riches, but that we should at least be able to put something aside for our children, pass on to one's children. And not only our children, but our grandchildren. Uh, and we don't want to come to our lives in the same way we came into this world, naked and empty-handed, God, as the day we were born, God. We pray, God, that you, although we can't take the riches with us, God, that we can be a blessing to someone. We can be a blessing to our children and our children's children and even someone else along the way. God bless us and keep us in the knowledge of knowing how to get our financial house in order. And we want to thank you for Brother Derek Parker, God, and continue to keep him and bless him in the name of Jesus. God, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so very much. We'll be talking soon. All right, brother. <laughs> Good God night. bless you as well. God bless you.